Now, repeatedly we are saying weak language and uh, features of a weak language. Let's talk about what is strong language. Quite interesting, definitely. Lekev says that women use emphasizer, hedges, whatever we have taught. These things make their language weak and women are positioned as weak in talk and in society. This is her point of view. All these features, they are indicator of weakness. When in anger, men can use all these language resources, so their language is strong. Which resources? They avoid these things, but instead of that, they use some other linguistic resources, which are necessary to make language strong. And you will be surprised to know those strong features. And they are the foul language, expressions, uh, taboos, and uh, severing words, uh, hell, and F word, and things which you can't utter in company of cultured and decent people. So when they are in anger, even uh, they use abusive language. So this is. This makes the language strong. That's why sometimes by law, it is restricted that nobody would use foul language, tabooed words in presence of children and uh, women. Whenever women want to express, if these features which make language strong, if they are used by women, what would be the effect? Would they become powerful? No. People think that this is their emotional bust. Uh, they express their uh, frustration and things like that. But instead of these foul expressions, what they do? They use euphemistic language. What is euphemism? We use pleasant and decent words to uh, talk about unpleasant and indecent things. For example, instead of saying criminal, this is somewhat harsh word, women would like to use antisocial elements. Similarly, instead of saying someone mad, they would say ape, bandar, monkey, and uh, blue hair not old woman and because at age women are very sensitive uh, in uh, matters of age so that would hurt someone if they say old so instead of that they would say blue hair and ace instead of talking about uh, something harsh and heinous like killing men use if you uh, see their language. This word shit that shows annoyance um, and uh, anger that is mostly used by uh, men and uh, women at most they use gosh. Uh, gosh shows their surprise or shock. In swearing words like damn, hell, goddamn, bloody, what the hell and uh, F words, etc. There is no gender difference. Sometimes even women use them. So if we are making language features as indicator of power, if men use them, they are strong. So women can also use them. Would they become strong? Again, the same question. If women use weak language, uh, and uh, uh, sometimes if they do the reverse, they use powerful language, uh, authoritative language, would they become powerful? Not. It is the system, it is the culture, it is the hierarchy that makes them powerful or powerless. So we can't directly relate. Language is one factor, definitely, but it is not the only factor.
this is the main central point that we are discussing. So if severing worse, uh, as uh, the list shows, uh, they are seen in communication, so both men and women use them. In positive interjections, interjections are those expressions which uh, express our feelings, uh, feelings of sadness or uh, feelings of happiness, bravo, ah, uh, etc. Alas, so uh, these like wow, cool, they are used by both genders. So, the same point. No direct link between language features and gender. Dirty language, trash talk, severing words, all are for the same thing. Foul language are used to show power to intimidate. And when these words are used, a person feels fear. Now that uh, a person feels threatened, so it shows power in this sense. If women use it, it is just show of emotional burst, not power. But its use repositions women. If they use, for example, so they won't become powerful. As I said earlier, instead of that, what would happen? Their position would be changed. Thinking about them would be changed. If a woman uses such strong words, which men use in anger, what would be thought? They would say that this woman tries to become a man. This is a challenge for our domination. Uh, see, in Punjabi movies and theatres, you often uh, might have seen such things. Sometimes, males use such language just for social bonding, but all all are people which are antisocial, vagabonds and uh, the drunk and the gamblers and boxers. See how before boxing, the boxers uh, uh, use such kind of foul language about each other to rouse their anger so that they can fight uh, uh, in a very furious manner. So, like that. It shows their freedom. Another thing. This is very important point that why men use only in anger uh, these uh, kind of things, these kinds of words. One reason that is pointed out is that actually they show expression of freedom, freedom of what? Freedom of uh, those people, a freedom of uh, the advice from those people, especially women and mothers that don't use such language. This is uncultured, uh, this is indecent, implied. So, so now they think we, we don't follow those uh, women, we are free. So just a, as a sign of freedom they do that, this is one point of view. Now with the, uh, this brief uh, discussion, what we conclude about uh, being a strong language and a weak language, just because of the features, uh, we associate language uh, that this is strong and it is uh, associated with men, this is weak and it is associated with men, is right. Now, definitely, so far, we would uh, uh, not be able to agree fully with lack of, lack of views about women's language as weak and men's and strong. Again, we are concluding the same. It needs rethinking. A direct link is not a valid point of view.